Welcome to Best Buds Gardening. I'm Julie. Today, let's learn how to grow loofah in Zone 6, Seed to Harvest. Growing these guys in Zone 6 can be a real challenge because they won't bloom until the daylight hours start to shorten in the fall. Now, I'm talking about the species Cucurbita cylindrica. If you buy seeds simply labeled loofah seeds, this is the type you're most likely to get. This is a very smooth gourd that grows up to two feet long, and you will need something for him to climb on. The vines grow 30 feet long or more. There's absolutely no reason to start these guys early. You will not get a head start on the bloom time, and you might be doing yourself a disservice because they're very sensitive to cool weather. In fact, loofahs are spoiled little brats. If you expose them to temperatures of 50 degrees or below, they'll pout and stop growing for a month. So after your nighttime temperatures are consistently above 50 degrees, let's soak a couple of seeds. After a few hours of soaking, one of our seeds has sunk to the bottom of the container. We know this seed is viable. The other is still floating and probably isn't any good, but we'll try to germinate them both anyway. We're going to put them on a damp paper towel, then into a baggie so they don't dry out. Lufa seeds germinate best at a temperature of about 80 to 85 degrees, so I'm going to put my baggie someplace warm, right on top of my CPU. After five or six days, you'll see a white root growing out of your seed. Now, it's time to plant it. We'll take a cup with drainage holes on the bottom filled with potting mix and make a hole about a half inch deep and put our seed inside. We'll cover him up, give him a little drink, and we'll continue to keep him someplace warm until he sprouts. Two weeks after soaking our seed, Mr. Lutha looks like this and we can safely transplant him outside after he's hardened off. It's May 22nd. I'm gonna take a little container with no bottom in it, which is just about the same height there as Mr. Lufa, and then I'm going to dig a little divot into the ground for the container to set in. Then, I'll take Mr. Lufa out of his cup, gently place him into the container, don't disturb his roots too much, give him a nice little backfill, and then tuck him into bed snugly and we'll give him a little drink and he's ready to enjoy the summer. This simply helps my yard guy not hit Mr. Lufa with the weed whacker and it'll help a bit with drainage. Five days later, May 27th, Mr. Lufa looks like this. And it's gonna get cold tonight, darn it. So I've cut the bottom out of a soda bottle and I'll use that as some greenhouse protection to keep Mr. Lufa from pouting. June 16th, Mr. Lufa is starting to climb up our trellis. Make sure he's getting eight hours of sunlight a day and plenty of water. He'll just grow vines all summer long. In fact, you'll think he's never going to produce anything but vines. Here's Mr. Lufa nearing the top of our trellis, June 29th. Here's Mr. Lufa vine halfway down the opposite side of the trellis, July 12th. So that's how your summer will be vines, vines, and more vines. And then, the 1st of September, when the daylight hours start to shorten in Zone 6, our male blossoms will start to appear. The females are still two weeks away. The race is now on with the freezing weather. The female blossoms start to appear the middle of September. The female blossoms sit on top of a baby loofah gourd and start to point downward. Lufa gourds can grow an inch and a half longer every day. By October 13th, this is what our lufa gourds look like. They're pretty hard and they're pretty heavy. Leave them on the vine as long as you can. October 29, light frost came in last night. Harvest your lufa gourds now. Yes, I know they're still green. It's okay. Your vines are dead. We are way beyond pouting now. And as long as your gourds are at least 10 inches long, 
you'll probably get a loofah sponge out of the deal. This is the harvest from one planted seed. There's a Sharpie on the bottom right there for some size comparison. We're going to bring these in and let them dry someplace with good air circulation. I put mine on top of the dog's kennel, so that way they're getting air all the way around. Will some of them rot? Absolutely. Will some of them turn out great? Absolutely. You don't have to dry these on the vine. As your loofah gourds dry, they'll start to turn brown. But if they're still squishy like this, you won't have a loofah sponge inside. You'll have marshmallow. This guy needs to dry a little bit more. After your gourds are dry and hard, you can snip the ends off with scissors or a knife. And then this is the difficult way to peel gourd skin off of your loofah sponge. I don't like this method of dry peeling because it's very, very easy to tear your loofah sponge inside. It's time consuming and it's difficult to get all the pieces off. So let me show you an easier way. Soak your gourds in some warm water for about five minutes. That's the trick. Now our skin is pliable and it will very easily pull away from our loofah sponge that's inside without ripping it and it doesn't come off in all these little itty bitty pieces. It comes off more as sheets of skin. You do every now and then in certain spots have to carefully pry the sponge away from the skin with your finger and when you reveal your loofah sponge inside it's not going to be pretty and white and there's a whole lot of goo in there we have to wash away. But this is the easy way of peeling it. Now go dump your water and get some fresh. We will continue to squish and wash out all of the goo. Feel free to change your water as necessary and see all the seeds coming out, all the black seeds. We just keep squishing and keep washing and I know it still doesn't look very pretty right now. And yes, we do have a little bit of damage right in the middle of that sponge, but most of this is going to clean up splendidly. Next, we'll soak our sponges in a 10% bleach water solution. Believe it or not, these will come out pretty clean. After soaking for a while, they're cleaning up pretty well. After they're as clean as they can be, rinse them very, very well with fresh, clean water. Next, we'll take our scissors and clean them up. We will cut off the good part here. You cannot bleach away rotten. No matter how long you leave that in bleach, that's not going to clean up. If it's rotten, it's rotten. We'll throw that part away. But this little piece, that's a pretty good piece, even though we tore him trying to get dry skin off. This guy I'm really happy about. He's only got this one little piece of rotten in the middle, and we'll just cut that away with our scissors. So that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. We'll square them off with our scissors. And then we're going to want to dry this sponge very, very well. Leave it outside in the sunshine, fresh air for a while. Dry it inside someplace with good ventilation. You might even be able to stick it in the clothes dryer. <laughs> okay, now you know you can grow loofahs in Zone 6 and you know how to do it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on how to grow your favorite stuff.